Alright, so we are going to start off with just this part here. And we are going to create soft jaws for it so we can have 12 of these in one setup. That's the first start of the soft jaw. So I create a sketch on the bottom side. We'll call it the bottom side of the part here. You can kind of see it there. And they're one inch by six inches long. And I am only going to create profiles in this jaw here rather than this jaw or both of them. So from the center of this part, a sixteenth of, sixteenth of an inch away, I set the part into the soft jaw so we have something for it to set into. And then here, hide this body here, we extrude that profile up a quarter of an inch. And then on this one here, extrude everything down, including this little piece here, this profile, we extrude that down as well the rest of the way. Hit OK, and that's what we have there. And then I go ahead and add the circles in here for the relief. There's the circle, sixteenth of an inch, right on the top face here. And then I extrude those down all the way to there. And then I pattern that over. And in this pattern, I select all these features here, all these faces. And then I pattern it over for a distance of five and a half inches, 12 times. And then I do the same exact thing with this body here in this pattern. So I select that body for a quantity of 12 over five and a half inches. So each one is set in the exact same spot as I drew the profiles. And then that's about it. I add that chamfer in there because there is a small radius on the part there after I turn it. So this, I cannot get a chamfer mill in there, so I end up surfacing this with a ball end mill, as you'll see when we go to program this. To create the program, we first start off with spot drilling these dog ear things here, the reliefs for the edge of the hex. And yep, we just select the same diameter and we go all the way across and just spot that out. And you'll see on the part that there's a huge chamfer in here on the soft jaw and that's just how it's made, how it's machined and given to me. Well, I bought it. And luckily it was just enough to where I could get a spot in here and this drill right here drilled straight. And it didn't get pushed away from the chamfer there. So we lucked out kind of there. Uh, but anyway, I took a sixteenth of an inch drill and just drilled straight down in. And I took it below this surface here, so for obvious reasons, so the hex would still set in there flat. And then we took a eighth inch end mill. And we did a 2D adaptive for this surface here on every single one. And then 2D Adaptive again selected these edges so we can get this arc right here for the turned down part of the hex piece. And then we contoured that same exact thing. And then we contoured this piece. And that's just a finishing pass. That to finish out that profile there. And then the parallel, we took an eighth inch ball end mill. And just did rest machining and that new to just hit this piece here. And we set the heights to mimic that to allow the ball end mill to only hit this area here. So we selected this face for the top height and then this edge for the bottom height minus 50 thousandths. And that was offset 50 thousandths above this face here for the top height. So now the ball end mill only knows to go between this, between 50 thousandths above this face and 50 thousandths below this edge right here. And it'll do that for every single one because we have rest machining on right here. And I do a two thousandths step over. And that's about it. After we generate it, 
this is what it looks like. It looks very odd, but you'll notice that the side of the ball will machine all that. And that's it. Fairly simple.